We'll be finishing up the topic of developmental psychology with two stage theorists, one involving social development and the second involving moral development. These are classic stage theories in the field of psychology. Now, as a reminder, if you are a stage theorist, you believe that development occurs in a series of predictable stages, that people do not skip stages in development, and that behavior at one stage is qualitatively different from behavior at another stage. So the first of these stage theorists is Eric Erickson, who was actually a student of Anna Freud, Sigmund Freud's daughter and follower of Freud. And he differed from Freud in a few ways. Um, for instance, Freud, Sigmund Freud, who we'll talk about later, thought that development, personality development, pretty much stopped by the age of five or six years. Eric Erickson, as you'll see in a moment, thought that personality development continued throughout the lifespan. Another major difference between Eric Erickson and Sigmund Freud was that Freud pretty much emphasized sexuality as a motivator for behavior, whereas Eric Erickson um, emphasized social interactions. For Sigmund Freud, it was stages of psychosexual development that you'll learn about later this semester. For Eric Erickson, it's stages of psychosocial development. So the first stage of personality development, according to Eric Erickson, involves trust versus mistrust. And basically, Eric Erickson, for each of his stages of psychosocial development, identified a crisis. He called them crises, but I think the better word here is challenge, that an individual during a particular stage of psychosocial development needed to overcome a challenge. Um, but again, he used the word crisis. And in the first year of life, according to Eric Erickson, that crisis or challenge involves, is the world a safe and comfortable place? A child, first year of life, is completely dependent upon the caregivers, uh, often the parents. And so for food and warmth and diaper changes and cuddles, all of that um, is necessarily f dependent on the ability and willingness of an adult in the environment. And while it is not necessarily the case that those caregivers have to respond immediately and rapidly to every single sound a little one makes, instead it's a matter of whether or not they are responsive to the child and basically meeting the child's needs. And if that occurs, then the child will learn that the world is a safe and comfortable place and will be able to move on to the next stage of development. But in the context of trust versus mistrust, I want to stop talking about Eric Erickson for a moment and talk about some of the classic research in this area. So I want to introduce you to the Harlow studies conducted in the 1970s. At that time, psychologists, scientists were debating about whether the source of the bond between parent and offspring was the result of the parent being a source of food for offspring. And the Harlows conducted research to test this idea. Basically, they raised baby rhesus macaques in isolation, away from other monkeys, but they raised them with so-called surrogate mothers. And here you're seeing photographs of surrogate mothers. On the left, you're seeing a surrogate mother that is basically a wire structure. And on the right, you see the same wire structure, but it's covered with a ter soft terry cloth fabric. And what they found was that when baby rhesus monkeys raised in isolation are given a surrogate mother that's just the bare wire structure and that has a bottle and is the source of food, the bond didn't really occur with that surrogate mother. Instead, these babies spent uh, 17 hours per day or more clinging to the soft, cuddly surrogate mother. And if they were placed in a an unfamiliar environment, um, they would basically just huddle in a corner and shiver if the 
terry cloth covered surrogate mother was not present but if that soft terry cloth mother was present um, then the babies would cling to her and look around the room and then after a while they'd get up the courage to to hop down go over and touch something in the room run back to the surrogate mother cling for a bit and then get brave enough again to go over and explore the environment so the bond between parent and offspring is not the result merely of the parent being a source of food rather it's a much more complicated situation and these baby rhesus macaques were essentially using the soft terry cloth covered surrogate mother as a secure base just as any human child or any other little animal does with its parents all right back to eric erickson in his stages of psychosocial development and i want you to think about the second year of life for a child what actually is occurring during the second year well, hopefully, for most parents, it is toilet training. And this is very important from Eric Erickson's perspective. Basically, the child is learning, can I control my own behavior? If I can do this, I develop a sense of autonomy. If I experience excessive difficulties with this task, then I will experience shame and doubt. And that may actually continue affecting a person's personality or behavior well into adulthood, according to Eric Erickson. From about three to five years of life, a child is encountering a crisis or challenge involving initiative versus guilt, according to Eric Erickson. Essentially asking, can I become independent of my parents? During this time period, a child is actually beginning to separate a little bit from the parents, move away, explore the environment. And if the child is made to feel guilty about this, then that can impact the child's personality development and perhaps into adulthood. Whereas if the child is allowed to achieve some sense of independence, that's a much healthier outcome, according to Erickson. Next, from about six years to puberty, according to Eric Erickson, a child in our society, or in any society really, is learning important skills that are going to be necessary for adulthood. In our historical time period and culture, children are learning, they're going to school, they're learning reading and writing and math skills and computer skills and social skills, all of which are vitally important to survive as successfully as an adult. In other cultures, and Eric Erickson did study other cultures somewhat, a child might be learning skills that involve hunting and gathering of food and taking care of younger children. And these are the skills in that culture which are absolutely essential for survival in adulthood. Eric Erickson's next stage of psychosocial development is adolescence. And here the crisis or challenge is identity versus role confusion. Essentially, the individual is asking, who am I? What do I feel? What do I think? What do I believe? And it's a time period when we try on different kinds of behaviors or new ways of dressing or speaking um, to fit in with our uh, groups of friends. Uh, perhaps and then if those behaviors suit us we keep them if not then we discard them and move on to the next thing so if I'm adolescent according to Erickson and my parents are Republican then I'm going to try on being a Democrat or vice versa if my parents are not religious then I'm going to become religious or vice versa and basically see if these different belief systems or behaviors feel right to me. If you read a biography of Eric Erickson, you'll learn something very interesting, and that's that he spoke of having difficulties with this stage of his psychosocial development. For him, the identity versus role confusion issue was, was you know, a long time process. He basically had a stepfather with whom he did not feel close, so he changed his last name to Erickson, i.e. Eric, son of Eric. And when he was in his adol late adolescence and young adulthood, 
he traveled around Europe with a sketch pad and basically just um, was searching for himself. He ultimately learned about the work of Sigmund Freud and became a student of Anna Freud, Sigmund Freud's daughter. But he described himself as having a very extended period of seeking his own self-identity. Next, according to Eric Erickson, an individual enters young adulthood, and here the crisis or challenge involves intimacy versus isolation, basically asking, can I develop a warm, sharing relationship with someone? And the idea is that you can learn to have an intimate relationship with another person, or you will become isolated as an individual. And here's a good place to mention criticisms of Eric Erickson's perspective. One criticism was that it's not cross-cultural enough, although he did make an attempt in that direction. But another criticism of Eric Erickson was that he sort of presented a very pretty picture of development through a series of stages. And we all know that today, in our society and historical time period, divorce is a very frequent phenomenon. Some people want to put their careers first before they enter into a long-time relationship with another person, and other people seek that relationship or a relationship first. There's no correct way of living one's life. And for many people, you believe that you do have an intimate relationship, and then that relationship becomes problematic and you end the relationship and then perhaps at a later time point you start having another relationship. So life really is not a, such a perfect series of steps or stages as described by Eric Erickson. Next comes middle adulthood according to Eric Erickson and this is a time period where the crisis is generativity versus stagnation. Essentially, the individual asks, what can I offer succeeding generations? And according to Eric Erickson, there's no single correct answer to this question. Um, it may be that an individual feels that they are making a contribution to society through their career. Uh, if someone is a teacher or uh, a doctor or any profession really and the individual is satisfied with how they're contributing to their community or to the world then that's a healthy outcome of the crisis or challenge or it could be the opposite it may be that someone feels that their greatest contribution to the world is the fact that they have these wonderful children who are going to go out into society and have wonderful achievements and that's fine too. So basically the healthy outcome of this crisis of challenge is to feel that you're making that kind of contribution to future generations. Lastly, an individual enters late adulthood and the crisis or challenge here is integrity versus despair according to Eric Erickson. An individual asks, have I found contentment through my work and play? And basically, at this point in your life, late adulthood, there are no do-overs. You can't go back and redo anything. So hopefully you don't have regrets, according to Erickson. So you're basically asking yourself, well, did I spend too much time on my career and neglect my family life or not take up enough hobbies or recreational activities as I would have liked? It's too late now to go back and change it. Or perhaps I spent so much time on family matters or in uh, recreational activities that I neglected my career a bit. And everybody's going to have some regrets. But basically, according to Eric Erickson, one wants to be able to say, yes, overall, I did find contentment through my work and through my play, and that my balance between those two things was healthy and happy. And once again, criticisms of Eric Erickson's perspective are that he did not take a real cross-cultural perspective to see if his stages of psychosocial development were consistent with 
development of individuals around the world, although he thought they were, um, but also that, again, he presented a series of stages based on age-related challenges, and it may be that life really is not this sequential, that we will face challenges at one point in our lives and then have to go back and face those challenges once again at a later time.